Welcome back to the Backtrader series. This is your host Ali, and in today's video, we're going to start our discussion on the Backtrader indicators. Now, before I start, if you like my content, I would like to ask you to subscribe to my channel and like my videos, of course. Without further ado, to use any indicator in any platform, first we'd have to load it. Uh, in other words, instantiate it. This means that whatever, whenever we're working on a strategy, the indicator must be declared during the initialization phase of the strategy. If you don't know what I'm talking about, please refer back to the backtrader strategies to know more about the initialization phase. The links will be in the description. Well, the backtrader indicators can be used in two places, either inside the strategy or inside another indicator, which gives us great flexibility when building new indicators. Well, you have to think about indicators as vectors, basically, or lines. Using the indicators in the strategy, during the instantiation, f instantiation phase, all vectors are calculated. And during the next phase, whenever there is a new bar, whenever we call this vector or whenever we call this indicator, the current value must be checked or be given. Well, during the initialization phase versus the next phase, basically, we have to understand how things work, basically, between those two, or the difference between those two. Any operation involving lines object during the initialization phase generates another line object. And any operation involving a lines object in the next phase yields a regular Python type, like a float or a boolean or an integer or anything similar. During the initialization phase, for example, the variable high-low difference holds a reference to a lines object which is pre-calculated before calling next and can be accessed during the standard array notation or the brackets basically. It does obviously contain for each bar of the data, data field the difference between the high and the low. This also works when mixing simple lines for example. Um, like lines, like for example the SMA which uses the built-in indicator to get the 200 days moving average then comparing it with the close of each bar to create the close over SMA line or vector, which is, in this case, would be an array of booleans, true or false, true or false, and so on. During the next phase, a close over SMA yields a boolean, which is the result of comparing two floating points. We have a floating point of the close and the SMA. When we compare them, we get either it's a true or false. We could have done this in two ways. During the initialization phase, we could have generated a vector or a line for all possible values of the of the booleans, basically, so true, false, true, false, and so on. Or we could have used the close of the, of the data feed along with the instantiated SMA data to basically to check for each value of them its current value, or basically its the current logic, basically, either it's a boolean, true or false. So to recap, to use any indicator, we have to instantiate it during the initial init phase. And during the next, we call this current value or the current value of this indicator. Time to code. So what we're going to do is basically build a simple strategy. Let's call it test strategy, test stg that takes the bt.strategy class Um, basically, we're gonna need to instantiate it, as we learned earlier. During any strategy, it's an init and the next. During the instantiation phase, we're gonna call the SMA, or basically we're gonna create the SMA indicator, which uses the built-in indicators from, oh sorry, build bt dot indicators from Backtrader. Which, as you can see, we have tons of indicators. So. Most of them we're gonna use them basically uh, from the library, or we can use them as classes or sub or master classes to build the super classes to build our own indicators, our own custom ones. So we're gonna need the SMA, sorry, which takes the self dot datas dot close. Notice that I'm not giving it the current value of the close. Instead, I'm using the entire closes close uh, vector or the entire close column from the data feed and a period of let's say 200 days moving average also I'm gonna build the RSI for example we're gonna instantiate the RSI which also uses the indicators built-in indicators from uh, BT self dot datas dot close of a period let's say 14 Def next. Oh, 
sorry, self. Now we're gonna try to print the current value of the SMA and the current value of the RSI. So print, and since it's an F, it will be an F string, um, let's say SMA of, oh sorry, uh, current, let's say current uh, data, current price, which is equal to self.datas of the current data dot close and give me the current value of the close SMA sorry of um, self dot SMA we're using the vector from here and give me the current value of the SMA also RSI sorry RSI value would be self dot RSI and give me the current value of the RSI. We already downloaded the data for Bitcoin, for the daily data for Bitcoin, parsed it, and now we're gonna add it, add the strategy, uh, instantiate Cerebro, add the data, and add the strategy. Done, let's run it. And as you can see, we printed the current price, the moving average, and the RSI of each candle.